do you think the best assets are for anyone to come out, you know, finish uni, try to find a job, maybe trying to reinvent yourself and do something different? What do you think you need? You need a really good way of thinking. That's what you need. Everything that you need is inside you. The other stuff is helpful, but there's no point. You can have the best technology in the world, the best team in the world, but if your thinking is faulty, if your way of processing your world um, isn't in line with your values, isn't in line with what you want to make happen, you're going to be frustrated and your brain's going to close it down because what's the point of going in a clunky way towards somewhere you don't really want to be. So I would say get that right first. Work out, you know, what is the dream? What is it that you want to do next? Not the big life dream, just your, your best next guess for the next step. And then once you have that in place, just give it everything and have fun with it. I think I panicked too much about, oh my God, am I ever going to make it? Is my whole life going to be a disaster? And I think if I'd sort of relaxed and said, well, this is the time for, you know, sitting in Parisian cafes, getting your heart broken. This is the time for that, that you do have time. So um, don't sort of think that you have to make it all happen in one year. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, make sure you're making something happen. Make sure every day you are building yourself and, and working out, you know, well, is that true? What else could be true? Questioning in better ways. And, th and the best way to do that is to, uh, is to get the training from people who have learned how to do that, from people like yourself. Flexibility. Yeah. Flexibility is something that I, I think... I think we've been used to being almost institutionalized. And Absolutely. if you institutionalize people, you infantilize them. So they don't, they aren't, they lose the creative streak. They lose their, um, their ability to think outside the box, to use that ghastly business term. Um, so if we can persuade people that they have got a lot more to give than just what they're giving in their particular, in their job, then those attributes that they, that they also have that they're not using in, in, in work could be put to good use. Uh, and help them to learn as you know to pick up different skills as they go along. I sometimes think employers look at a CV and they look at your qualifications and they look at your experience, but they don't look at your attributes as a person. Um, and there's a lot. Most people have got a lot more that they could give. They've got a lot of ideas they could inject into a business. They've got lots of. Um, if you consult your employees, for instance, you get massively good ideas. And the best employers are the ones who talk to their workforce and then put their ideas into into process and you can you can turn businesses around that way by using the skills and attributes and everything else that your that your employees have without looking outside for consultancy and i think that if people would learn to be more flexible and think about their own skills as ways forward ways that they could move way other you know where they could move into other jobs it would be quite I think that would be a really good way forward, a really different way of thinking about your career. I, I work a lot with recruitment organisations. I've presented to probably 90 in the last year. And the thing that I'm hearing from them all was summed up very nicely by the MD of one of the largest ones, Reed Recruitment. And uh, I was reading it in the back of the uh, British Airways magazine in their business section. And what he was saying was that employers are now prizing mindset over skill set. Absolutely. They're prizing the ability to hold a positive attitude, to be self-motivating, uh, to know how to set goals. They're prizing that over skill set and qualifications. And, and the reason is very simple, and it's what you just outlined. Technology is moving so fast that whatever skills and qualifications you may join an organisation with, they will need to teach you new skills and how to work new systems within five years yep. because you know, all of that's changing regularly. And it's much easier, of course, to teach someone skills than it is to help shape their attitude. And so if there are two candidates, one with the skill set but lacking the attitude that the company is looking for, and the other with a real positive can-do attitude, but short on some of the skill set, they're taking the candidate with the positive attitude and then teaching them the skills that are needed. So most people are not going to have jobs for life. They're going to have perhaps three, four, five different careers almost. So the career that you have when you finish education, the career that you have when you're buying your home and 
you know, bringing up your children and so on and so forth. The career that you have in your 50s, because actually you, you've you gone as far as you can do and you want to do something completely different. And then perhaps another career in 60s and 70s because you're working later, but you want to do something lighter or something more creative or something that you've always longed to do. Mm. And we're seeing a lot more people now setting up businesses in their 50s because they're being made redundant and they're setting up little businesses, doing things that they've always wanted to do. And... Um, you know, really letting their creativity flow. Mm. So I think if we can get to the point where we where we realise that we've got all sorts of skills and that we may want to call on those and keep them up to date, but that we've also got lots of attributes Absolutely. that we might want to use in future. Absolutely. And instead of pigeonholing ourselves into one particular box. Well, I had a, a guest, uh, Humphrey Walters, and he was actually saying something about focusing on actually what your good assets are and what you're actually good at. Forget about what you're terrible at. Just but wait, it's very hard for us ourselves to see that. Mm. Other people, uh, sometimes I say uh, when I'm doing working with small business, and I will say, can you ask your 10 best closest friends or family members or whatever, or colleagues, whatever you like, how they see you? What do they see as your skills? What do they see as your strengths, your weaknesses? Mm -hmm. um, and it's really interesting what comes out of that. And people are quite amazed how other people see them. Mm. It's that old um, Robert Burns saying, oh, would the Lord the gift to gaze to see ourselves as others see us? Mm. But people do tend to see things in you that you might not recognise in yourself, or you may have forgotten. Mm. We forget we had skills. We forget that we've done things in our careers. Mm. That, or things know. that we do, we take for granted. That Absolutely. Other people don't. Yeah, especially women returning to work, for instance. Mm. You know, women, not just women, obviously some men do too, but women run a home. It's running a business. Mm. And you gain a lot of experience and so on about budgeting and management and so on so for negotiation is one of the best skills uh, a parent can have yeah. um, and so I think that you know you you overlook those assets. Going beyond goals a sense of purpose for your life I believe is the most important thing. Purpose and goals are, are from the same core root but the distinction is a goal always has a very specific date and a purpose is more like a path because it's an ongoing journey that you're making. And once you discover your path in life, the path that you want to tread, and it will invariably be the thing that you are most passionate about, then your goals are like milestones along the path. And you will be at your most powerful when you are setting goals that are moving you along the path of the thing that you are most passionate about. I believe that this work is my purpose in life. I managed to pay off my debt many years ago and got myself into a, a comfortable position, but actually I'm pushing myself uh, more than I've ever done before simply because I want to reach as many people as I, as I possibly can. And I think it's, uh, it's my duty to do that. And so my goals are stepping stones along that path. And for me, having a purpose that's that's a real asset because a lot of people are just so lost in life. The thing is, is that the quality of your life depends on the quality of your questions, the questions you ask yourself, and uh, and I think that's one of the things that people. And it's okay to get it wrong, as you said, have fun, yeah. and it's okay to get it wrong. Oh, it's it's vital to get yeah. it wrong. Absolutely, yeah. the mistakes are you know hilarious sometimes, and you <laughs> and you, you learn from them the way you don't learn from anything else. I would add to that when people sort of say, you know, you've got to ask a better question, you've got to ask the right question. What most people do is they ask one question. And they don't even realize that they accidentally substitute at the last second for another. So they will ask a question like, what would be a really fun way for me to work out? And then they'll answer it. They'll say, well, there's that gym down the road. So instead, they've answered the question, mm. what's the most, what's the nearest place to work out or what's the cheapest place to work out? So you've got to make sure you're always going back. Have I answered my, have, I've designed my question brilliantly. Have I actually answered that question or did I do a last minute substitution?